Welcome true crime enthusiasts to Don't Forget Me Too, where we shine a light on the often overlooked cases of missing black women and children. I'm your host, Jay, and in each episode, we delve into the heart-wrenching mysteries that demand our attention. These stories are more than just cases. They are the voices that need to be heard, the faces that need to be seen. In today's episode, we'll navigate through the details of three cases believed to be connected. Dorian Dayon Thomas, a nine-year-old who vanished without a trace. Gloria Ann Covington, who was found murdered by Dorian and a group of kids. And Linda Jackson, who was murdered a month after Gloria. As we piece together the puzzle, we invite you to join us on this journey. A journey that seeks not only answers, but justice. Dorian Dion Thomas was born on May 6, 1989. He resided in an apartment complex in the 1300 block of Northwest 9th Avenue in Amarillo, Texas. He was last seen on October 26, 1998. He reportedly filled his bicycle tires with air and began riding around the neighborhood, possibly intending to get a snack. Dorian has never been heard from again. His aqua bicycle was similar in fashion to a girl's bike. It was outfitted with very small white tires and rims, white handlebars, a black seat, a chrome-colored connection pole extending from the seat to the frame, and a rusty chain. The words freestyle were imprinted on one side of the bicycle. It disappeared with Dorian and has never been recovered. The circumstances surrounding Dorian's disappearance are unclear. He was reported as a missing child after more than 24 hours had elapsed since his disappearance. Authorities have been unable to determine if he was abducted or if other factors were involved in his case. Dorian was one of the children who discovered the body of Gloria Ann Covington in August of 1997, more than one year prior to his disappearance. Dorian was playing in Hilltop Park in Amarillo with friends when they came across Covington's remains behind the YMCA building. She had been stabbed to death. Authorities have been unable to determine if Dorian's disappearance is related to the unsolved murders. Several of Dorian's relatives initially believed a family friend took him to Dallas, Texas after he disappeared. The individual called authorities shortly thereafter and was not involved in Dorian's case. Extensive searches of the Amarillo area produced no clues as to his whereabouts. Dorian is described as a streetwise boy who knew his way around the neighborhood. Foul play is suspected in his case. Some agencies state that he disappeared near his grandmother's residence. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, Dorian was last seen riding an aqua blue bicycle with white tires while wearing a red shirt and blue jeans. CPL Jeb Hilton with the Amarillo Police Department said Dorian's case is cold and he is listed as a missing person. From time to time, CPL Hilton said they have received tips on the case, but none that could ever help them close it. MyHighPlains.com sat down with Brandon Thomas, Dorian's older brother. You know, time heals wounds, but it's still like a fresh scar if that makes any sense, said Thomas. There's days where, you know, sometimes you don't feel it, but then there's some days you just feel it and it's like a constant ache. And so, you know, after so many years without closure, it never goes away. That's one thing that's for sure. It never goes away. Thomas started an online petition on change.org to have a street or park in Amarillo named after Dorian. Just three days later, it already had more than 500 signatures. Just some way to commemorate him, you know, so that his memory lives on. Because a lot of people here, you know, it affected a lot of people more than I thought, said Thomas. You know, it really affected a lot of people and people still to this day, they talk about it and they're very emotional about it. And since I've started the petition, I see that a lot of people are very much for this. So, I mean, I really want to make it happen. It would mean a lot to me and my family, you know, because I know there are times when people bring him up. It's always about that, you know. And so to shed a different light on it, to me, I think would kind of help to change the perspective of people, you know, that are coming up and don't know, he said. You know, a lot of people go to college and they study these cases and his is a particular one. And so to not always see it in a negative light, to try to make something good out of it. Thomas said he and Dorian were very close and had a lot of fun together. There were three of us, but me and him, we were the younger of the two. And so we bonded a lot. Like we had a lot of common friends that I still keep in touch with to this day, said Thomas. He loved to go fishing. He loved anything outdoorsy. He loved being like, he was a gymnast. He loved like doing backhand springs and he loved diving off the diving board. 
Just really adventurous and charismatic, he could make friends with anybody he met. Radio Station 98.7 The bomb reported in February 2023. The city of Amarillo wants to make sure he is never forgotten. A petition went around late 2022 to have something in the city named after Dorian. It is going to happen. North Heights School in Amarillo is going to be renamed. It will be known as the Dorian Thomas North Heights School. Dorian Thomas is also going to get a mural on the school that is named after him. When last seen, Dorian was nine years old. He would now be 34 years old. At the time of his disappearance, he was four feet tall and weighed 60 pounds. The tragic case of Gloria Ann Covington shook the community to its core. In August 1997, the 45-year-old was found stabbed to death in a field outside of the North Branch YMCA. The discovery was made by children playing in Hilltop Park, one of whom was Dorian Thomas. Covington's friend witnessed the murder and was also assaulted during the crime. It was reported that Covington was attacked inside a light-colored pickup truck before her murder. Just a month later, Linda Gale Jackson was killed under similar circumstances, and both women's homicides remain unsolved. In September 1998, a friend of the victims was beaten by an unidentified man, described as Caucasian with red hair pulled into a ponytail, blue eyes, and a mustache. She believed that the assailant may have been involved in Dorian's case and even threatened to harm her again in the future. The Amarillo police conducted a podcast in 2023, hoping to generate more leads. During the podcast, Detective Jimmy Reifenberg and Covington's daughters shed light on the case, dispelling misconceptions about Covington and emphasizing her love for her family. The podcast also revealed that additional DNA testing would be conducted on two of the cases, including Covington's murder. Despite the passage of time, the authorities remain committed to seeking justice for Gloria Ann Covington and Linda Gale Jackson. The last leg to this puzzling mystery is the bizarre case of Linda Jackson. At 7.15 a.m. on September 11, 1997, police dispatch received a call in reference to a dead body lying in the roadway in the 3100 block of N. Wilson. Upon arrival, officers found the body of Linda Jackson lying face down in the street. Jackson was killed when she was struck by a motor vehicle and the case was ruled a homicide. Witnesses reported that she entered a vehicle similar to the truck involved in Covington's case. The Amarillo police did a podcast in 2023 hoping to bring in new leads. During the podcast, Sergeant Carla Burr and CPL Jeb Hilton interviewed Detective Jimmy Reifenberg and Linda's two daughters, ages 7 and 9 at her death, Casey and Christian Jackson. During the interview, Detective Jimmy Reifenberg stated Linda was found lying face down, she was nude from the waist down, and had a white shoe on her left foot. She was wearing a red, long-sleeve sweatshirt over a light blue t-shirt, and she had a severe head wound and autopsy findings found that that she had been hit by a car or some type of vehicle, so the special crimes unit at the time were called out to start investigating this, this scene where she was found. And uh, there were several uh, shoe impressions in the dirt. This was a dirt road. There were lots of shoe impressions in around her. There were tires and fresh tire impressions around where she was as well. And so when the special crimes unit at that time were called out, they had a pretty significant scene that they had to photograph and document. When asked about her mom, one of her daughters stated my mother was strong independent. Of course, she worked many jobs as we stated she used to be a teacher's aide and also she worked at what was then called CTEL. As far as like her personality, she was outgoing, she was joyful, she was understanding, and then you know of course like everything else that she could be to a person. She was always nice and her smile was like everything. Her other daughter stated this when speaking of what she remembered of her mother. The first thing I honestly think of is Prince. My mom loved Prince and there is this button that she had. I see like with my children, I love doing things with them, I love doing activities. I go and get my sister's kids and I do things with them and our mom, she always like kept us doing stuff. I literally remember like my son's five and I remember sitting on the curb like her teaching me how to tie my shoes when I was five and like these rollerblades that Toys R Us carried, you know, they were green, they were teal and white and we would go roller skating. She just always kept us going, you know, and it was great that we were always doing stuff with her and yeah, we were just doing stuff and I remember we learned to ride the bus and so we'd ride it by ourselves. I was like five years old, but I was very aware of my surroundings at the same time. And I mean, I just remember her face. 
Linda's case has not been solved, but it is one of the cases being investigated out of 49 open unsolved cold cases. Evidence has been sent for retesting. Thank you for joining us on this exploration into the mysteries that often go unnoticed. If you found today's episode compelling, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who may help us in our quest for truth. Your support is crucial in keeping these stories alive. Share your thoughts in the comments below and let us know if there are specific cases you'd like us to cover in future episodes. Remember, every share, every like brings us one step closer to finding answers. A big thank you to our subscribers for being part of the Don't Forget Me Too community. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Stay tuned for more gripping stories, in-depth investigations, and the pursuit of justice. Follow us on TikTok for behind-the-scenes content and updates on upcoming episodes. Until next time, take care, stay vigilant, and let us continue seeking the truth together.